Well, here we are once again in the house, and I am so excited because our guest today is none other than Representative Jason Sane. Representative Sane, welcome. Mark, thanks for having me. Boy, I am really, you know, you might think I'm like a like a silly kid, but I've been looking forward to this particular interview for quite some time. So uh, I, th I have great respect for you. I don't know if you know that or not. You and I don't interact very much in the house, but uh, I appreciate all that you do. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you that. And so that's all I had. Thanks for coming. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, thank you. And, you know, at, at the legislative building, I'm usually moving at a, at a, at a lightning speed for Fat Boy and uh, yeah. uh, don't get a chance to catch up very often. So this is this is kind of fun to do it this way, if, if nothing else. So thank you for having me. Well, I got to uh, put you on the spot here. Uh, if you were pressed and you had to make a choice today, would you have a controller in your hand? Or would you be watching uh, the latest Star Wars? I, I'd probably have a controller in my hand, right? Because I always know that I can always watch uh, whatever show I want to watch late at night after the wife goes to sleep. Uh, and <laughs> so usually, usually with my iPad right in front of my face, but uh, but uh, playing a, as I call it, playing a little pew pew because uh, I love playing Call of Duty and and uh, first person games and yeah. Uh, so yeah, love love that. Just had a conversation about. 20 minutes ago, I'm on campus at UNC Charlotte today and was talking uh, to a couple of students about uh, about, about esports. So we were uh, talking about it, and, and uh, so it's, it's fresh on my mind. So that's, that's why I want to play. Well, that was my uh, uh, broadcast veteran attempt at a segue, moving oh, away from oh. me telling you how great you are into the topic of esports. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, uh, let me get serious. Esports is a huge huge up and coming uh, segment of the uh, economy and people think about kids, you know, their own kids with their heads, as you said, buried into their device playing Call of Duty. My son, it's Fortnite, it's Call of Duty. And um, I have to make a confession. I can't play that stuff. I don't guess I'm too old, but I just can't figure it out. And so I don't even try. In fact, I don't even watch him because I'm like, I don't have any idea what you're doing. But Representative saying this is uh, something that you've latched hold of. And I believe that you are on the right side of this coin, that this is going to be something that North Carolina will benefit from greatly. Why don't you tell me and tell the folks that are watching and listening your vision uh, for esports and the future of North Carolina? Well, thank you, and, and uh, it is something I, I love talking about. And uh, and, and good news, Mark, uh, you you probably have the same skill level as the Speaker of the House, because uh, <laughs> uh, the Speaker Tim, my, my friend Tim, <laughs> he and I uh, have been on together because his sons, his two sons, are in college. Uh, they love to play Call of Duty, so you know, sure. of course, you know, like any dad, you want to try it, right? Uh, there was, I don't say it was embarrassing. I'm just going to say. He's much better legislator than he is a, a, a Call of Duty player. Uh, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. And I think he would say that. So um, I, I don't think I'm talking about his back. No, no. But, but you know, so like I said, I'm, I'm here at the UNC Charlotte's campus today. We, we just did our IT oversight committee meeting. We held it here. Uh, it's a joint oversight committee with the Senate. And uh, we were kind of highlighting some of the things that you're doing on data analytics here on the campus at UNC Charlotte. Uh, which which is somewhat related to the topic of esports because really what esports is about is about STEM education. It's about getting devices into kids' hands and getting them to be problem solvers. Whatever games they're playing, it's not really about the game as much as it is. It's getting them interacting with technology and then taking the leap into the next thing. At UNC Charlotte's campus, they've got an esports team here uh, that's very competitive. Uh, NC State has one, and then UNC Greensboro, which we put a big investment into UNC Greensboro, into the into what Chancellor Gilliam at UNC Greensboro sees as a future for for that campus, for that university. Uh, it, it's attractive. It's 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 something that students want to do, and it's a very diverse population of students. As a matter of fact, we went for the ribbon cutting last year, uh, for we were we were doing the, the cutting on their new esports arena, uh, which is just below. Uh, in their in their student center, just below the dining area, which is in and of itself nothing like I had when I was in school. Uh, <laughs> but but it's it's very nice. But but this new esports arena, which they had 
uh, some private dollars coming in to invest as well. But they have seen since it opened uh, this semester, uh, averaging about 266 students a day. It's not open early in the morning, uh, and it doesn't stay open too late at night because they you know, do want students doing their, their actual regular homework. <laughs> but but, but what, what we saw when we did the ribbon cutting, uh, the, the chair of their eSports club, female, uh, she since has graduated and gone on to be gainfully employed. Uh, but, but what we saw and what we see is that eSports really speaks to a big – uh, diversity of students. It doesn't matter, uh, male, female, what, what your ethnicity is. It's something that, that folks connect to on a, on a platform and, 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 and through gaming. In that, though, is also from a competitive standpoint, from a sports standpoint, uh, you know, we think it's healthy to have those type of competitions. But, but equally as important is, is the investments that come with it, the programming that comes with that, uh, the opportunity to, to lend into other businesses like statistics, like catering, like video production, uh, and all of those things. So Chancellor Gilliam at, at Vincent Greensboro, uh, I, I'm one of his biggest fans because though he doesn't understand esports, he understands the value of it. Right. And and he'll and he has he has seen when he came to me as an appropriations chairman and asked for a little bit of appropriations for his campus uh, to help facilitate that. I was glad to do so, and I always like rewarding. Uh, you know, good behavior, and so from that, uh, they've come back and they're and they're creating esports leagues for for our, our middle school and high school students across the state, and and facilitating that. They just got a big uh, partnership with Epic Games, which is in Cary, North Carolina. So Greensboro, Cary, uh, you know, you don't have to have close proximity. Uh, you don't have to be in the same town, uh, but but they're helping with that effort, and so it's really giving that school an opportunity. Uh, we put some investments at NC State on esports, and then we had we put into what we kind of mimicked our, our film grant process, and we're inviting these what they call majors, uh, these these big e tournaments, esports tournaments into North Carolina. We've had several already. We put this in last year's budget. Uh, we put we set aside five million dollars that would help offset costs, production costs, as, as these events came into North Carolina. We've seen several so far, and we've got announcements of things to come. Uh, including Fortnite into into uh, I think it's going to be at PNC Arena in Raleigh or maybe it's at the Convention Center, but it's but it's coming into Raleigh. Uh, wow. And these these are these are happening. You know, Charlotte they they can be large or smaller. They can be regional events uh, that they qualify. But I think last time I talked to the folks at EDPNC that that, monitor, that uh, manage this program, uh, I think we had exhausted about half that money. At least promised about half that money already, uh, which shows that we're getting return on investment very quickly. The event, the last thing that I went to, uh, the, it was a major uh, in, in at PNC Arena in Raleigh, uh, packed out, uh, multiple day event, uh, you know, just just amazing the amount of people coming in. And, and again, so we're, we're getting you know, the benefit on on all sides, the tourism aspect, the the quote unquote heads and beds. There there are people coming to North Carolina just specifically for uh, the esports. I I, uh, I attended a, a major, a Halo major. Uh, so those who play Halo, which I I do. Uh, my son and I went up in December, and it was at the uh, 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 in downtown Raleigh. And I see three three young men, uh, 24, 25 years old, uh, who obviously had on the credentials for the for the tournament. Asked them where they were from. One kid was from Indiana, and two kids were from Kentucky. They played together, uh, had only met in person, uh, or as we say, IRL in real life uh, at at the at the tournament. So, uh, uh, but they had been friends, and they were on a team together, an esports team together. Uh, so it really, you know, bringing those those folks, and I, you know, I'm talking to these guys, and uh, they're in town. They're, they're, they're of course, you know, uh, they were over to Sheraton. Uh, you know, of course, had their rooms booked and going out to dinner and doing things outside of the tournament. And you know, they're the best kind of citizens. They're, they're visitors. They spend money here, and then they go somewhere else. Uh, but but really, it's it's created such an ecosystem, and it's only going to get bigger. And I've got other states, other legislators calling me, wanting to know how they can do that in their state. And I'm not. I'm not giving away the secret sauce just yet. <laughs> well, you know, this, uh, just listening to you talk, uh, number one, it's obvious you do have a passion for this. And I think that you are definitely the right person to lead North Carolina into uh, the uh, blossoming and the growth and the, uh, the whole thing when it comes to this brand new segment of what could be a huge money-making uh, opportunity for our state and for our economy. Now, 
tagging into this, and I'm sure you can talk about this also, but I got to hit this because uh, two days ago, there was an article that UNC Greensboro, which you mentioned, was getting a grant from uh, some standards commission to develop augmented reality. And this hit me, Representative Sane, because uh, a few months ago, I like to ask my son, he's uh, in his in his late twenties. And I always ask him every few months or once a year, what's next? Because, you know, it was, if you remember MySpace and, and then that went away and he doesn't even have Facebook anymore. Um, I said, what's next? He said, uh, AI, artificial intelligence. And he said the company he works for had given uh, all of their managers and he's doing pretty well. He's, he was a manager and he got these uh, thing called an Oculus. And yeah. he said, dad, I can be anywhere with this thing. I And it looks like I'm right there. It's not a cartoon. It's not an avatar. It is as if I were uh, on the seventh hole at, at uh, Pebble Beach. He said, it's unbelievable. And he said, this is, this is next. He said, uh, you know, imagine you're just going to pop on your Oculus and, and do what you and I are doing right now. We don't have to have our right. laptop. We don't have to have, and, and obviously that's a very minuscule uh, uh, part or use for something like that. But the thing that they mentioned in this article about uh, the augmented reality that I thought was really cool was first responders. They go into a, uh, a building and the smoke is so heavy they can't see but they can pop on an augmented reality uh, set of glasses and it gives them the layout of the room that they're in and they can uh, see as if they're in that room, but there's no smoke so they can get out. Isn't that amazing? It's it's amazing. I, and I'll tell you, Mark, so I, you may not know this about me, but I'm, I'm, at one point in time, my life was a certified firefighter uh, oh. and a, a volunteer for East Lincoln Fire Department. So that's why oh. our, our first responders are near and dear to me. Uh, but, you know, part of our training was how do you go into a room that's smoke field, uh, get down low, get below the smoke, uh, but then you're following, you know, hose line or finding ways to get in and around a building uh, that you can't see anything in. And so you do a lot of training on that. Uh, but if you had that augmented reality and where you could, you, you now, your, your mind knows where you're going. You can, you can find your way through, a, through, through multiple rooms, through a building. Uh, I think it would just be one, a lifesaver. Uh, for sure, uh, but but also just just amazing the technology and think about the training that comes with that too, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of times we would have to we, we have what we call burn buildings uh, where we have to set fires and you know train and you certainly need to do that if you're a firefighter, but you don't have to do it all the time and you could and you could reduce a lot of costs, a lot of exposures to to the smoke and the chemicals and everything else uh, and training for those times when you when you do have to be in the in, in the middle of those things. So it, it's a safety you know life safety issue. For the firefighters themselves, uh, from from just a training aspect, so I, I think it has multiple applications, and and it all goes back to if you've got kids interested in science and technology and math, because um, it, 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 you're going to need those programmers, you're going to need those folks who figure that out. Uh, we've got to get them somewhere. We've got to have that workforce that's ready. So I think your son's absolutely correct. Um, I, and I've got we're now in my home because my we we have only a, one child, so uh, he's quite the salesman. Uh, we're on our, our 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 second version of Oculus. So he gave me his first pair. So I get the hand me downs, uh, yeah. and so he's he's got the the latest greatest Oculus. But they're but they're amazing, um, you know from 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 everything and anything that you can do with them. The gaming's fun, but the gaming's are really just a small part of it. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, boy, I could talk to you about this for hours because I think while I don't understand any of it, I think it's all fascinating. And I can see, uh, probably not as clearly as you can, but I can see the future of economic development and benefit for our state. Now, speaking of seeing, and they try to, they want me to keep these around 18 minutes. So I, while I could do a, a 30 to 40 minute interview with no problem, um, I'm going to try to uh, get you uh, in and out because uh, the shorter, the better, they say. So uh I want to change topics, even though I could talk about the, the augmented reality. I love this stuff. But in terms of seeing, 
you as uh, a uh, you're a chairman, right, of the operation uh, operations appropriations committee. Yes, sir. House. So yep. you have to have vision. And I want to ask this question because I haven't asked anybody else yet in doing all of these interviews. When you when you guys first came in, uh, obviously the previous party had left things in a big mess, and we're not going to talk about that because we've I've, I've hit that nail uh, several times already. But you had to make some changes, and I want to know: Were you ever afraid, Representative, saying that it wasn't going to work? Yeah, we're going to cut taxes, but. Uh, what if it doesn't work? You know, what are we going to do? Did you ever have any fear or were you always confident? Uh, I, I'll be absolutely completely 100% honest with you. I was always confident. I know that it works. I, I, I Look, my mother was a county commissioner. Uh, they cut taxes when she went in in the, in the 90s. Uh, first time ever that they had really worked at cutting taxes. We saw the benefits of that of the growing area. Apply the same thing to the state. When you cut taxes and there's more capital available, capital to, will flow where it's treated best. Uh, it's something I believe in at my core. Uh, so really, we've never looked back. Uh, we had safeguards put in place. We made sure that we had measurements and said, yes, this, this we believe this will work. And when we're proved right, we'll do more. Um, but, but I always believed that it was going to work. And because we believed in it, and because that, you know, me and my colleagues, uh, Senator Bob Ruscio was one of those. Uh, we, we've had uh, many folks on the, on the finance staff who've worked on that. And I was the finance chairman before I was appropriations chairman. Uh, as we as we looked at where we wanted to take our state in, in, in terms of recruiting industry and making sure that we were going to be way ahead of other states, we ended up with the number one business ranking because we had vision. When you talk about vision and saying, where do we want to be in 10 years? I don't want to be stuck in the middle. Uh, so that means you've got to invest in, in education. You've got to invest in broadband. Uh, you've got to invest in public safety. You have to be very intentional with what you do, but at the same time, you can't break the bank while trying to do all these other things. So you have to be uh, very disciplined, um, and particularly as you're going through tax reform, because, you know, if somebody's ox is getting gored, they're going to be the ones that scream at you. And sometimes you, you just have to know that you're doing the right thing for your state and move forward. But I, but I don't think we ever hesitated. Um, we, we had good buy-in from the House and Senate going from when, when Senator Tillis was Speaker Tillis and and Phil Berger's been in the Senate, and then Speaker Moore uh, has continued that. It has been, it has been a, quite frankly, it's it's been a it's been a marathon, uh, not a sprint. And viewing it that way, and knowing that we're we're going to look at we're going to measure a year, three years, five years, ten years in advance, and all the while looking over our shoulder, seeing what other states are doing, uh, so that they don't catch us. They can try, uh, and we like the competition, but I always want to be looking to the future and what we're going to be doing best the people that we represent. You know, you mentioned uh, some of the accolades that we have received. Um, Moody's said that uh, uh, we are in a prime position that other states are looking at us. Forbes, we're the best business climate. Um, business Facilities uh, Magazine uh, about a month ago said that we were had the best business climate. Today, they came out with kind of an addendum that said uh, businesses all across our country have Carolina on their mind. And they kind of went through and explained why that is the case. It's a really nice uh, uh, piece that I would recommend anybody uh, to go to businessfacilities.com and check that out. Uh, it talks about the, the, the education system that we have here and transportation and roads and the workforce. And um, you have to be cognizant of so many things. And this is something I wanted to ask you about. We're in the middle of a uh, federal administration, how do I word this nicely, that has really put us in a bad position. Right. You know, uh, you can just drive by or go get gas and know that things are not like they were. And you don't, you know, I don't like having to pay uh, a lot more money than I was paying for my gasoline. Inflation has skyrocketed in a very short period of time. What I think people need to know, and I'd like you to bang this drum a little bit, um, as far as seeing into the future, two things. Number one, I thought about this this last weekend. When when Ian was rolling around and, and tearing things up, 
I, I mentioned to a couple of my friends, you know, our legislature has put money aside in case it really comes here and does, does a lot of damage. I think that was pretty smart. And number two, our legislature, led by uh, Republicans and yourself and others who have been in leadership now for uh, over a decade, you have looked and said, by golly, if we have inflation, we know that projects that we've started on today might cost more. Tell us about how you thought about that and what you did to prepare in case inflation uh, was going to uh, put you in a bad position with projects that you may have already started. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I, and we have, we've been very intentional. And it, it's, it's, it's just like running your family budget if you're doing it smartly and not all families do. Uh, and, and, and like my family, sometimes we learn the hard way. Um, and, you know, through, through, through wisdom experience and, and everything else that goes along with that, you, you end up, you know, uh, not thinking you're, you're always going to be right and that you're always going to know what's coming next. But what, what you do know is that challenges will come. And if you have a reserve, if you have, if you have planned for future emergencies, if you've invested in things like uh, remediation in our streams and waterways and, and making sure that those are clear and not seeing the flooding that comes with those when, when, they, when they do back up, um, you know, doing those things, investing in things that cost you smaller dollars today than the recovery afterwards, I think is very smart, very intentional. I, uh, again, and I do this with a, with a, a lot of the great partners. Uh, our majority leader, John Bell, that's it's one of the things that he's very intentional about because he sees it more in his area than I maybe do in Western North Carolina. Uh, but, but knowing that any drag on our economy, whether it be in Eastern North Carolina, Western North Carolina, Central, is a drag on our economy. We, we all have the shared experience of, of living in the same state. So, so knowing that, putting money aside, making sure that our rainy day funds are flush, making sure that we don't owe money to other people. You know, one of the worst places in the world you can be is owing someone else money. Yeah. And so making sure that our, 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 our fiscal house is in order is, is incredibly important. And sometimes that comes, you know, with some pain points that, that folks, you know, it's, it's, you know, when, when we do have a surplus of money, uh, you know, folks want to spend it all. They want to put it all in one place. Yeah. No, it's not what we do. We, you have to be the adult in the room and say, as tempting as that may be, we can't spend it all. We have to prepare for things in the future that we can't predict, but that we know will happen. Uh, we, we can with some certainty know that things will happen and things will change and being nimble enough to be able to change. And you're nimble enough when you're not suffering too huge debt, when you're not overspending when you prepare for future crises. Um, that's a big difference. And comparing that to, to the federal model uh, and federal leadership, particularly now, uh, you know, releasing more oil reserves doesn't solve your energy problem. Um, we've, we've got a real problem, but shockingly enough, when you, when you cut off pipelines and you, and you cut off means to get uh, those resources you need, and, and then you're allowing some other entity, some foreign entity to uh, put pressure points on you, that's the reason you and I are paying higher at the pump. And, and, you know, that's not the way we do it in North Carolina. I can't fix the federal government, but I can do as much as I can at the state level. And so I think me and my colleagues have, have been very intentional on that. You know, we, we are we are a footnote in history. And I always tell people, my colleagues, that, uh, yeah, it's nice, but never believe your own press release 110 uh, percent. It's like asking your mom, you know, if, if, you, if she thinks you're the best. Of course she does. That's your mom. <laughs> but but the reality is that if you but if you do the best you can do. And, and whatever our footnote may be, I think they will look back at history and say, at least for the time that I've been serving and with the, with the folks that I've been serving with, is that they looked out to not just that moment, not what could they fix today, but what could they fix into the future, and quite frankly, make everyone's life in the state a little better place to be. And I think that's our mission. I think as elected officials, as, as I go back to, to my district and talk to people, whether they be Republican, Democrat, unaffiliated, whatever, you know, I represent them all in my district, and I've got to do, I've got to put forward uh, the best foot that we can, best foot forward that we can uh, for the people who live here. And so I think that, you know, having that underlying philosophy has led us to a much better place and given us a lot better policy because we, we weren't just caught up in the moment, but looking to what may come into the future. Well, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to send you to Washington for a couple of weeks and maybe uh, let you have some conversations and uh, hopefully that would help. My goodness. Uh, I appreciate so much the, uh, all that you've done for our state, all that you do for our state. Uh, 
we've gone over, which was not my intention, but that means that I'll have to have you back because there's so much more I would like to talk to you about. You are uh, a, a real asset to our state, Representative Sane. Uh, the folks in Lincoln County are blessed to have you uh, serving them, and uh, I appreciate very much you joining me today on In the House. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it so much.